Hello guys, welcome to the channel. This is Sonora Design and guess what? Today is gonna be the best day ever. Why? Because we're building vacuum tube wireless speakers. Okay guys, so today I'm gonna talk about the Redondo speaker. This is the Redondo in Maple. Let me show you guys. That's the Redondo speaker. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the design and the ideas behind this speaker. So the name Redondo came after Redondo Beach in the South Bay, California. As you guys might know or not, Redondo means round. The speaker is not round, it's square as you can see, but it has rounded edges. And I love Redondo Beach. But the idea was to make a medium-sized speaker that would fit uh, your credenza in your living room, you know? So I used the standard size for those 1970s uh, receivers. You did. I mean, some people might still have them. I love them. We're going to work on them here in this channel later. So as you guys know, I wanted to keep it simple and clean. I'm all about modern and I wanted a modern design. This is kind of 1970s modern. It's not like 1950s as other speakers that I have, but I have a big influence from the modern movement, like and everything modern, like furniture, architecture, and all kinds of objects, chairs and tables and desks. And so the, the idea was to keep it simple. I didn't want any controls on the front. I wanted it to be easy to operate. You know, anyone can do it. You have the volume knob, power it on, volume knob, connect your Bluetooth, it goes automatically and you have it working. The vacuum tubes are part of the design. I wanted to show the vacuum tubes because I want this to be a piece that could be uh, in your living room that where, where, where people can just like look at it and notice like, oh, what is that? The tubes, you know? Some people, kids don't know what tubes are, but like other people know, or maybe kids know it too. I don't know. I wanted to show the tubes because they're badass. I wanted to keep it simple with a natural sound. So that's the idea of having tubes in a Bluetooth amplifier. Some people might think that's crazy because I mean, it can interfere, right? You get noises and all that. I mean, you gotta work with that. If you wanna have like wireless plus tubes, that combination is kind of sketchy, <laughs> but it works. Once you know how to connect them and make them work together and we introduce them to each other. Hey, Bluetooth, this is like tubes. Uh, they're a little older than you, but I mean, just try and be friends and work together. Please no noises. It's kind of hard, but it works and it sounds great. I love it. The idea of the tube preamp came up as I started testing all those class D power amplifiers. It's really funny because I had a bunch of boards and I started testing all of them and they sound great, but uh, I wanted that little crunchy, um, warm sound of the vacuum tubes, you know. So I came across those little headphone amps, I mean, headphone amplifiers or mini vacuum tube preamps. And I came across with those and I started testing them. I was like, does that really work? It really works. I liked it. I liked the result. I like connecting them to those power amplifiers and noticing uh, the change in the sound. And I wanted to add that to this speaker. You this know, is the top of the, the Redondo speaker. I have a speaker chamber here. I have the amplifier uh, chamber here and I have another like speaker chamber here. So that's an enclosure, that's another one. And that's how the Redondo works. We have two full ranges on the front and let me show you the back. That's it, we have the ports. We have the tweeters. I added tweeters on the back. I didn't want to show the tweeters on the front. That was an exhaustive work to get to find uh, how we're going to have the highs that those drivers did not deliver. They have high frequencies, but you got to stay on axis. So I wanted it to, 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 to feel like the whole room, like with high. So we added like uh, those helpers here. Yeah, that's the basics of the drivers. I wanted it to be different. So the idea of the acrylic on top is to show the tubes. You get here the two vacuum tubes and the volume knob. I took the volume knob from a Gibson guitar. This is a quick, it's called the quick knob from Gibson. So that, those are the only controls that show on top of the, 
the speaker. You know, this acrylic is pretty funny because I, I, I later on decided that this acrylic can work as a dry erase board. You know, you can use your markers here and erase it. So if you want to leave a note for your girlfriend, you just write it here, you know, in the heart here and everything is all right. It looks beautiful. <laughs> this is the power button. I can turn it on here, turn it off. I have the auxiliary input here and I have the selector, input selector. Up, you go to Bluetooth, down, you go to auxiliary. This is the power amp, which has like a fan. And we have a grill here for ventilation. They got really warm, not that much, cause this is a low voltage buffer. And plus the class D amps, they don't get really hot. So, in, but anyways, I wanted to add that just for safety. I don't, I, I just don't want those things to catch up on fiber cause they are too hot or maybe melt the acrylic. It doesn't get that hot, so it's all right. Now let's go to my favorite driver selection and amplifier parts. So we have here everything that's inside the Redondo. Uh, we have the drivers. I'm gonna start with the, the Dayton Audio RS100, four ohms. That's a full range driver. It's metal, metal frame, aluminum cone and uh, rubber suspension. I tried, I started this project with a PS95. You guys might be familiar with it. And it's like such a good driver. I didn't even need the tweeters on the back because they have like a good amount of highs, but I needed more power and I wanted more bass. So I came across this one, the RS100. This one gave me all of that, but not the highs that I, I was looking for. So that's why I added the tweeters. And those tweeters are the, the Neodymium three-quarter tweeters from Dayton Audio. Those are the ND20s FB. They're like, rear mounted so they have this little plate here on the back so you can attach them from the inside uh, and they play really well i just use them with the capacitor and resistors like to lower it uh, attenuate it a little bit i use them on the back as you guys know i showed you before so i reversed the phase i liked it i liked it a lot i like those drivers and they 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 have such a good performance so for the power amplifier i use this wondom it's a 50 watt per channel class d amplifier i can attenuate that i can i can use those controls like to lower the, the power there's a combination here that's the bluetooth module from wondom as well this little board here comes with a external antenna uh it's the aptx Bluetooth 4.0 and uh, this is a mini vacuum tube pre-amplifier those are from FX audio I tried a bunch of them I tested like several mini tube pre-amplifiers or headphone amplifiers whatever they call it and I came across those ones and I I, I decided to go with it because I mean it's uh, easy to work with them they're really pretty quiet and the tubes are easy to find I mean those are in the market those those tubes are the stock ones Shungwang tubes, but I usually change the tubes and I use those ones, the General Electric 5654W. As you can see, those are the tubes that I've been using and they are all over internet. You can find on eBay, you can find on Amazon. And this mini preamplifier comes inside of uh, a case in a, in a black or a silver case. You guys just take it apart and that's what you get. You find this piece here. I needed a power supply. And I, after like testing a bunch of power supplies, I just realized that I had to connect the Bluetooth module separate from the power amp and the preamp so I wouldn't get like noises, you know, those hisses and stuff. So I decided to go with this one that I found online. It gives me 24 volts and 12 volts for the power amp and the preamp. And I keep the Bluetooth module in a separate power supply so it doesn't interfere with anything. So I don't like they run in the same circuit. So those are the parts that I use for the Redondo. The links are gonna be in the description down below. Uh, you guys have any questions, just ask me. I mean, how did I connect them? And how did I make it work? Oh, the tricks are just to work with the ground, you know, because otherwise you get noises and you get interference, you know, so usually, I ground the Bluetooth board. I ground the RCAs on the mini vacuum tube preamp. 
It's all about grounding it. You know what noise is. Let's go to the mix. enjoyed it so in this channel I'm gonna be approaching uh, more from a product designer point of view I can share the technicals if you guys want let me know here on the comments below what you guys want 
to learn or to see here in the channel, I would just ask you to smash the like button. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope to see you guys soon. Thanks.